right or wrong it sounds like the lyric of a song but since it's so i thought i thought you ought to know that i love you i love you madly better fish are in the sea well that's not the theory the theory for me and baby that's for sure just like i said i said before i said i love you i love you madly now if you could see the happy you and me that i dream about whoa 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 so proudly you know that the breath of spring that makes me sing my love song so loudly good things come to those who wait so just relax and wait for fate to let me see the day that you say to me i love you love you Jason Foreman.
Davis. Love you madly, right or wrong, it sounds like the lyric of a song. But since it's so, I thought, I thought you ought to know that I love you, I love you madly. Now, better fish are in the sea, and that's not the theory, the theory for me. And that's for sure, just like I said before, I love you, I love you madly. Now, if you can see that happy you and me, I dream about a oh, 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 Just relax and wait for fate to let me see the day that you will say to me, you'll say, I love you, I love you madly. I love you, love you madly. I love you, love you madly. And we're off. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Dave was telling me that uh, some people are coming out tonight for the first time after COVID, so that's a real honor to have you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, well, as Dave mentioned, I'm a Chicago-based jazz singer, as you can tell from my pasty complexion. <laughs> <laughs> I was out today. <coughs> I walked outside today, and I saw this glowing orb in the sky called the sun. And I went for a walk, and it was beautiful. I'm really happy to be here. I was supposed to be here... <coughs> I was supposed to be here two years ago. Um, <laughs> seriously, I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was in the middle of a winter tour, and the last leg of which was here in North Carolina, and the whole thing got canceled. But luckily, Dave had me back, and I'm here with these incredible musicians. And we've already had a great time tonight. I've, I've been working with Ed and Jason last night, and then on Tuesday night, um, Jason and, and uh, Dan and another wonderful piano player were with me, so it's just been a real treat to be here. Um, so tonight we're gonna do uh, a bunch of Billy Strayhorn tunes and a bunch of Duke Ellington tunes. Um, I first became interested in uh, Billy Strayhorn. I watched this show on PBS. It was a documentary, American Experience, or one of those, one of those things. And I started to get fascinated by him. <coughs> and then I read this great book called Lush Life, which is up here if you wanna look at it on the break. Um, and it was, it was, not only was it a beautifully written book, but it was meticulously researched and just fascinating. Um, and it, it, it sort of got me turned on to a lot of uh, Billy Strayhorn tunes that I wasn't aware of, and I learned a bunch of new tunes, and I put this little show together, and here we are. Um, so Love You Madly was a, a tune that was written in 1950. Um, it's credited to uh, Duke Ellington, but it was actually co-written by Ellington and Strayhorn, and um, still to this day, he doesn't get credit for it. Um, but Duke Ellington, as you know, you know, he had a career that spanned five decades, and he has 1,200 releases worldwide, which is the largest catalog in jazz and one of the largest in any genre. And you know, he's studied by musicologists and historians. You know, it's so-called Ellingtonia, and you know, his work gets played by by orchestras with all the reverence given to classical canons. But nobody knew at the time, especially it's only in the last 20 years, how incredibly complex. Uh, this music was made and how much Billy Strayhorn contributed to the catalog. So it's fascinating. Um, I'd like to tell you a little story about uh, a tune that Billy Strayhorn wrote. So you know he, t he wrote Take the A Train, right? Y'all know that. I know you're savvy people. And he co-wrote Satin Doll. Um, but apparently they met when Billy Strayhorn was 23 in 1938. They met at a a place in Philadelphia where Duke was playing, and it, their their meeting was set up. They were supposed to meet um, on the band's break. Um, Duke was 39, and apparently Duke was was lying on a chaise lounge with his eyes closed, getting his hair done in his robe. <laughs> you can see it, right? You can picture it. And so Billy walked into the room, and Duke didn't even open his eyes, or, or so the story goes. And he said, why don't you just play something for me, kid? So he played the ballad Sophisticated Lady, which as you know is a sophisticated melody, and he reharmonized it and played it at a different tempo, and apparently Duke Ellington opened his eyes. <laughs> and he said, can you do that again? And he said, sure. 
and he played the Ellington Ballad, Solitude, and then he did the same thing. He, he rearranged it, played it at a different tempo, and just completely expanded on it, which is basically what Billy Strayhorn did. He absorbed all of Duke Ellington's composing techniques, and then he expanded on them. So he was, you know, with all their work together, even though he didn't get much credit at the time, really none um, for, for many reasons, um, he sort of elevated and, and um, made Duke Ellington's, uh, you know, rightful place as a, as a serious composer at the time. And he had a really, really um, active lifestyle outside of the Ellic Ellington Orchestra. He wrote uh, musical reviews. He recorded his own CD. He produced, recorded, and toured with... Um, Rosemary Clooney and Lena Horne and Carmen McRae and Ben Webster. Um, he was just incredibly literate, incredibly smart. In, in fact, his nickname was The Dictionary because he, he had such a huge vocabulary. Um, and he was just an, an amazing, brilliant musician. Great lyricist, too. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to stop yakking at you a little bit and continue on with another tune. We'd like to do a tune for you now called Daydream. And this was actually one of the tunes that Billy Strayhorn wrote when he first was hired by Duke Ellington. After he was hired and told to take the A train and he write it, wrote a tune based on that, he moved in with Duke Ellington's family and he became a member of their family essentially and lived there with his wife and his son and his uh, Duke Ellington sister. And um, you know, he just totally took him under his wing. Even Mercer Ell Ellington said, he never took me under his wing the way he did Duke Ellington. I think there was a little uh, jealousy. But at any rate, he moved in in Harlem Duke went off to Europe to tour, and Billy Strayhorn was left to sort of immerse himself in these techniques. And he often wrote with specific people in mind, and he wrote this next tune, Daydream, for the band's uh, saxophone player, Johnny Hodges. And it's usually done as sort of a very sort of dreamy, atmospheric ballad, but we'd like to do it for you tonight as a waltz, so we hope you enjoy it. It's called Daydream. <laughs>
warming. Daydream, why do you harm me so? Deep in the rosy ago, the face of my love you show. so much that's a great tune thank you it's so nice to have an audience that pays attention and listens <laughs> I always say this joke but I, I, f I think we feel a lot better if you just take your cell phones out and start texting <laughs> oh or maybe you could just answer a call and have a conversation <laughs> right in the front row because that's happened um, so yeah, it's no, it's no overstatement when I say that it, it's wonderful uh, to be here in this beautiful venue. So thank you for joining us. Yeah. Yes, indeedy. And, and also, I know you know these musicians, but I am so, so honored and privileged to have been able to work with them this week. I want to take them to Chicago with me. I really do. I could have wept when I heard Dan because, he, because he's such a sensitive player for a drummer. No. I meant to say for a singer, but that was like a Freudian slip. <laughs> but it, it, sometimes that's true. And you know, when I'm on the road, I work with new musicians and it always energizes me and it makes me so happy to work with new people. Um, and I, I just really can't say enough about these incredible musicians. They, they have just shown me, uh, I've been inspired by them actually. And they've shown me so much, uh, they've welcomed me. I feel like I'm gonna cry, <laughs> shoot. So I'm going to stop. I'm a little tired, and I get a little emotional when, I, when I'm tired. So I'm going to stop. But anyway, I'm going to formally introduce these people, if I may. Um, Mr. Ed Palantonio. <laughs> On the stand-up bass, he's been with me all week, and he's got a great little flower in there. Mr. Jason Foreman on the bass. And over there on the drums, I could kiss him. I could weep. He's so sensitive. It's Mr. Dan Davis. <laughs> so yeah, what a treat. And you're going to get to hear Angela Bingham come up, too. She's, she's something, too. So we're excited to have her. All right, we're going to continue on with a great tune. This is a tune that Billy Strayhorn wrote before he met Duke Ellington when he was uh, leading his own trio in Pittsburgh called the Mad Hatters. And he wrote this tune when he was 19. Um, so he was he was just so smart, and he, you know, beli belied his age. But anyway, he wrote the the the, mu the music and the lyric for this. He wrote pr pretty good lyrics most of the time, um, and this is usually done again as sort of a dreamy ballad. I, I first heard Carmen McRae do it. I love Carmen McRae, and that's how I got inspired to sing it. 
Um, but we're going to do it as a nice bossa nova for you. And it's called Something to Live For.
Thank you so much. Isn't that a great tune? Yeah, well, I'd like to invite Angela Bingham up to the stage, if I may. <laughs> Angela is someone that I met through mutual friends in Chicago and New York, as it turns out. We both had that, yes. And Angela was instrumental, no pun intended, in getting me, 100% intended, yeah, in getting me hooked up with Dave so that I could perform here for you lovely people. Well, thank you, Angela. Thank you, and she's been so supportive. Like, I stress out about gigs sometimes. And like beforehand, you know, getting the set list together, I'm like, how about you sing this? She's like, sure, great. Okay, I changed my mind, how about you sing this? Sure, whatever you want. Okay, change changed my mind, how about this? Yeah, whatever you want, just let me know. And you know. <laughs> It's been like that, and she's been lovely. So I can't say, I know you know Angela, and I know you love her as I do. So yeah. Angela Bingham. Thank you, Elaine. Elaine Dame, everybody. <laughs> you know, the singers, we have to stick together. Sweet, I thought I was gonna get up here and Absolutely. screw up the ballad at first. <laughs> Woo, what a relief, I can just do some, I can screw up something else. All right. Cigarette holder, which wigs me over my shoulder. He digs me out, cotton, that satin doll. Baby, can we go out? Skipping, careful, amigo. You're flipping, speaks Latin, that satin doll. Well, I'm nobody's fool, so I'm playing it cool as can be.
cigarette holder Which wigs me over my shoulder He digs me out cat and that satin doll Baby, can we go out skipping? Careful, amigo, you're flipping Speaks Latin, that satin doll so much. <laughs> Elaine's like, just keep on, just keep singing, just keep going. All right, we're going to do Satin Doll again. <laughs> That's all we practiced. <laughs> but I, I am going to bring your lane, er, I'm going to bring your lane back up in here. That's how it is. Thank you. You can tell it by how f far deep in the south you are, by how high the, the thank part is of thank you, because if it's like, Thank you. It's probably North Carolina. But if you're down in Mississippi, they're like, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Frank, for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> my husband, my husband was born and raised down there, so it's cute. He has dual citizenship. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Elaine, I feel so good being here on the stage with you. Isn't she wonderful? Aww. Yeah. That's awesome. Singers have to stick together, we you know. We do. We do. So Satin Doll was yes. written by Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington, and it was his pet name for his mother. It's Billy Strayhorn's pet name for his mother. Oh. Yeah. A little edible. And the, yes, and then he wrote these <laughs> lyrics. Yes, he wrote these lyrics that were very edible, so they dragged in Johnny Mercer to write uh, something else. In the 50s, he wrote those lyrics, right? Yeah, I think so. I feel like we were just here talking about Johnny Mercer. Were you guys here for the Johnny Mercer Mancini show? <laughs> oh, those, there were two people. A smattering. <laughs> we were so glad you were here. Thank you. And Johnny Mercer wrote a lot of good lyrics. He sure did. Yeah. He did. I saw that show. It was fantastic. Thanks. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do an Ellington tune for you now. This one was written in 1940. It was written as an instrumental first, and then a guy named Milt Gabler came along and came along and wrote the lyric, and it's called "In a Mellow Tone." And we've never done it, so what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> we no, didn't even it's practice. It's gonna be okay. We're in good hands. This is the practice. All right, here we go. But I feel like we've got our hem, our hemline. Oh no, your hemline's a little shorter. But we are like the legs sisters tonight. Yeah. <laughs> nice shoes, Elaine. Thank you. Okay. I just had to say that. All right. Sorry. All right. Serious jazz musicians, go ahead. We've now talked about our shoes. <laughs> you talked about the shoes last night, too. Uh, you got to think mm -hmm. with your shoes. I know. It's all yeah. right. You have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, that's a, well, we could go on and on forever. We'll just leave that alone. All right, we're in C, fellas. Are ready? Come yep. on. You're going to start it off. Two, She'll be here all night. some moves too. If you mope and grow, something's 
gotta give just go your way and laugh and play there is joy unknown in a mellow tone in a mellow tone Je 
big home. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Elaine. It's so nice to have you here. It's so comforting to have another singer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Angela's going to come up again in the second set and warble some more. She's going to sing a great tune, Billy Strayhorn tune called A Flower is a Lovesome Thing. All right, what's next, y'all? Oh, Lordy. Okay. All right, so this next tune is, is probably the tune that Billy Strayhorn is most well-known for, at least among vocalists. And um, he never meant for it to be published, or so he said. He just sort of started writing it when he was 19, and he played it at parties. Um, he played it for Lena Horne when she came over to his house and said, hey, what do you think of this, Lena? And then he just kind of just kept refining it. He finished it when he was 22. There's like this urban jazz myth that Billy Strayhorn wrote this tune when he was like 12 or something. <laughs> it just The number just keeps getting lower and lower. But according to David Hodge, who wrote the definitive um, book about him, it was 19. It's originally entitled, entitled Life is Lonely. And um, many singers who sing this song mistakenly think that it's a reference to um, Billy Strayhorn being gay. But in fact, that, that term wasn't in the lexicon at the time. And he said himself that he wanted everyone who listened to it to just interpret it as their own. So we give you Lush Life. <laughs> I used to visit all the very gay places Those come what may places Where one relaxes on the axis of the wheel of life To get the feel of life From jazz and cocktails The girls I knew had sad and sullen gray faces with distant gay traces that used to be there. You could see where they'd been washed away by too many through the day. Twelve o'clock tale. Then you came along with your siren song to tempt me to madness. smile was tinged with the sadness of a great love for me. Ah, yes, I was wrong again. I was wrong. Everything seems so sure Now life is awful again A truffle of hearts could only be a boy oh, Well, a week, a week in Paris just might be the bite of it all I care is to smile in spite of it I'll forget you I will while yet you are still burning inside my brain those who strive to live the lush life in some small dive and there I'll be while I rot with the rest of those
Thank you very much. Every time I sing that song, I have to relearn it because it's, it's such an interesting melody. What are we doing next, guys? I can't remember. Oh, goody. Uh, so this is a tune that was written for Lena Horne. Billy Strayhorn and Lena Horne were very, very, very close. She considered him her best friend, her soulmate. She wanted to marry him even though she knew he was gay. She said she would have married him in a hot second. Well, maybe not that, but um, in 1950s, hot second. But at any rate, she wrote this tune for him, and she wrote many tunes for Lena Horne. Um, and when played for other people, they would think, oh, you know, what's th what's th that's not such a great song. And then Lena Horne would come in and sing it and go, oh, yes, that, uh, that actually is a great tune. This is actually a great tune. One of my students turned me on to this song because I always tell them to listen to Ella and Sarah and Carmen and all the dead singers, <laughs> right? But my students, my young students are like, have you heard of Sophie Millman in Canada? She sings this great song called Take Love Easy, and that's how I heard it. Um, and this is credited to Billy Strayhorn alone, so we hope you like it. It still, it still rings true today. Take love easy, easy, easy On the free and easy plan If you can't take love easy Take it easy as you can Never smile too brightly, brightly When your heart is right and high Let your heart break oh so slightly When your baby says now that well-known pain is mighty hot, as all of us have learned. So can you handle it with velvet gum, and you won't get your fingers burned. Take love easy, easy, on the free and easy. Of us 
was hammered So handle it with velvet love And you won't get your fingers burned now Take love easy, easy, easy On the free and easy plan And if you can't take love easy Take it easy as you can Yeah, take it easy next all right oh this is the uh this is the set closer all right so this is a tune from a musical called jump for joy that was commissioned in in the 1941 i think for duke ellington to write it was co-written with duke and billy actually he got credit for musical collaborations um and actually it was very common at the time for composers like duke ellington band leaders to add their names to uh, a composition that they had nothing to do with. It was really common at the time, and um, publishing laws were really weird. So it wasn't until much, 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 much later when Billy Strand was like, hey, wait a minute, I'd like to get credit for this. Um, and he really never did, unfortunately, because, well, we'll get to that in the next one, but um, it's a nice, happy little story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I got you right here. Yeah. I know how to do it. <sighs> All right, this is a great tune called Rocks in My Bed. Yes. This is what I call a stripper tempo. You gotta watch yourself. I set you up for that.
I've got these rocks in my bag. Dan Davis, Ed Palantonio, Jason Foreman. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I have some CDs for sale if you want to buy a CD.
Back to the second set, things get a little looser. <laughs> we get a little drunker. Not really.
very much. Thank you. We have a bunch of twos for the second set. Um, and uh, the first set went a little longer than we than we thought it would. So uh, we'd like to uh, continue on with the tune. I think I think you're gonna like. It was uh, written for Lena Horn, and you probably never heard it. I got my hands on this from a singer who got her hands on it through somebody, uh, one of Billy Strayhorn's relatives who lived in Chicago. And so uh, I got my hands on this chart, and it's called Maybe. It was written for Lena Horne. You can kind of hear her singing it when you hear it. So we hope you like it. Love is a shoestring. Any way you tie it, it may come undone. Life is a new thing. Every day, something lost, something won. Maybe I'll see him again. Maybe the moon.
Thank you so much. Has anyone ever heard that tune? I know some of the singers probably have. What do you think of that tune? Yeah. Can't you hear Lena? You can hear Lena Horn singing that tune. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to do one more ballad for you, and then we're going to invite the beautiful and talented Angela, Angela Bingham. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Whew. Synapses. All righty then. All right, we're going to do a Duke Ellington tune for you. You, you may have never heard this verse. It's a good one. The good book says, go seek and ye shall find. But I'm in love and I know what time it is. My life is just like the weather. It changes with the hours. When he's near, I'm fair and warmer. When he's gone. I'm cloudy with showers in the ocean like the ocean it's either sink or swim when a woman loves a man like I love him never treat
Thank you very much. Thank you. That's what we call a wrist slasher. Ooh, no laugh. That one usually gets a laugh. All right, moving on. I'd like to welcome Angela Bingham back to the stage. She's gonna sing a beautiful Billy Strayhorn tune for you. Angela Bingham, everybody. This one? Okay. Fine. We have our own EQs. Jacques. All right. Is that a Jason? Spoopy. Spoopy. <laughs> Daffodil a rose, no matter where it grows, is such a lovely love something. A flower is the heart of spring that makes the rolling hillside sing. The gentle winds that blow, blow gently, for they know a flower is a love something. Swaying in the breeze, laying in the tree.
martinias drinking pale moonbeams azaleas swimming through daydreams wherever it may grow no matter where you go a flower is a love if she wanted to sing that song because I didn't want to sing it. <laughs> this is hard. But she killed it. She killed it. That was beautiful. Well, all right. We're, we're just going to do one more little tune for you if that's okay. Um, and I, before uh, we do that, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming out tonight and joining us. It's been an absolute treat performing here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm going to thank Dave for having me and all the lovely people here at this venue who, who took such good care of us, my sound guy. Um, Lynn. Lynn, thank you, sorry. Yeah, names. I can be, I, sometimes I forget my own sister's name. That, anyway, and I want to thank these incredible musicians for taking me in and making me feel so comfortable. And they're like a, I, I always describe musicians like this as like a, a warm, like, soft pillow with good support. <laughs> right? Yeah. So please, Ed and Jason and Dan. <laughs> Woo! Lucky, lucky me. All right. Hey, how about it? We're going to do a great tune called I'm Just a Lucky So-and-So. Because that's how I feel. Everyone I meet gives me a friendly hello, and I guess I guess I'm just a lucky so and so. The birds in every tree, they're all so neighborly. They they say. Well, I'd have to confess I'm slipping of a confidentially. But don't worry me, cause I've got a dream, and baby, it's a pippin'. Mm -hmm. And when the day is through, each night I hurry to a Just 
was I'm slipping over there. Don't worry me, cause confidentially, I've got a dream. Dan Davis, Jason Foreman, Ed Monsieur, Angela Bingham, where are you, hon? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed it. What a treat. Thank you. Angela Bingham. Thanks so much.